Hello, welcome to another episode of my mental wellness process, Integrating Mental Social Health. I'm Jen Carol E., uh, otherwise known as Sarah E., and um, I want to talk about something um, that has been in the mental health community and in the community at large, gaslighting. Um, I even uh, discovered another term related to it, unintentional gaslighting. Um, sometimes gaslighters will, uh, say, I don't mean to gaslight you. I don't mean to do this. I don't mean to do that. And that can, uh, cause further problems because either they're gaslighting you and hiding it, or maybe they're not gaslighting you, but you're still leaving the situation feeling like feeling bad, you know, feeling like nothing's resolved and you're the, the one that's, uh, in question. Um, I had an experience, uh, yesterday. I still was feeling a little under the weather and sometimes my mental illness can challenge me to the point where I still don't feel like leaving the house. I still don't, uh, want to interact with, uh, people. I have anxiety when I'm in grocery stores and I've been going through a special issues in my life that have been exacerbating that anxiety by rendering me feeling really vulnerable, such as dental issues. Um, when I go through issues that are traumatic, even in my present life, I need a big time out where I, I need to just kind of rest my mind and, and quiet down. And this was one of those times. Also, I'm in kind of a, a stage where I'm dealing with new relationship energy in my poly arrangement. And that's been uh, stressing me out too, even though that's been positive stress. You know, you stress can even uh, be stressful. So um, yesterday I took the liberty of uh, utilizing Uber Eats, um, not the restaurant, but the uh, blessed grocery store uh, service, which is very similar to Instacart. They must have added that on uh, during the COVID emergency, which I'm really grateful for. And um, I realized yesterday I could get, I could save some money by utilizing that instead of Instacart, which has been lately charging me exorbitant junk junk fees, um, lots of uh, surcharges and add-ons, and um, not to mention I had to give up my membership, Instacart Plus, because I couldn't afford it anymore, and um, so now I got to pay the the service fee and the delivery fee, so I decided to take advantage of the. Um, Uber Eats grocery service, and um, I instructed the delivery person to uh, enter my residential area, residential place, um, through a certain uh, entrance, and um, the instructions I thought were very clear and very obvious, and she insisted, when it was time for her to deliver, she insisted in going through another entrance way when I told her not to. And her rationalization was the, uh, the computer had told her to do that. And I told her, you don't have to worry about the computer. Uh, you can, you can still come in this way. And she goes, well, uh, the markings on your building are not clear. I went outside this morning to look at the markings on, on my building and they are very clear. Even after the painters had repainted it, the uh, markings were very clear, so I don't know why she said that. Um, when I gave her instructions over uh, other forms of communication to uh, come around, you know, yay, passageway, she still didn't get it. And it took her a long time to find it. And I asked her again, you know, where are you? Is You know, are you coming in through this way? And she goes, well, I'm still... I'm still over here, and I can't find it. And I said, I am through here this other way. Um, And I I mentioned my street, and I mentioned the markings on the building again. And I said, I need you to look over here to to find it. Um, when When I opened the door and I finally saw her coming, she was coming in through the other direction that I had not instructed her to come in through. And she goes, oh, but uh, they they told me to come in through this this other uh, direction. And I said, the uh, the passageway 
where I instructed you to come in was open and accessible. Um, and she's like, well, I, I, they were telling me to come in through this way. So it was almost like she was broken recording me and she was, uh, trying to make, maybe make me believe it almost felt like she was making a, doing her level best to insist that I was wrong when I knew that I was not. And so then I called uh, customer service and, um, they told me to talk to her again. They waited, they waited 12 hours to get back to me. And then they told me to talk to her again. And I said, I said, no, I don't want to talk to her. I can't even reason with this woman. She keeps on saying this, 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 and this. And what I want to talk about is gaslighting intentional or no can cause someone to doubt themselves. I'm getting this from GPT right now. Gaslighting is a form of psychological manipulation where one person intentionally tries to make another person question their own perceptions, memories, and sanity. Unintentional gaslighting occurs when someone inadvertently engages in these manipulative behaviors without realizing the impact it has on the other person. When someone is exposed to un unintentional gaslighting, it can lead to self-doubt as they question their reality or feel sure, unsure about their own thoughts and emotions. Gaslighting is often subtle and manipulative, and the person experiencing it may not be aware of the manipulation occurring. Over time, this can erode their confidence, self-esteem, and sense of reality. And, um, I, um, I'm addressing this, and I can only imagine what, what it is when someone intentionally gaslights you. It's so toxic. Um, you know, three times I gave her instructions, and it was almost as if she didn't even want to follow them, and she kept insisting that I was, I was, you know, difficult, and I was in a difficult place. Um... If someone consistently invalidates, and she did three, the three, she matched the three times I tried to reason with her. She matched them. Um, it can indeed contribute to self doubt. Um, if if someone keeps stating that things happen differently, this type of behavior can make you question your own memory, perception, and overall sense of reality. Then, when the administrator was even saying, uh, "Well, did did it happen? Did it really happen this way, or whatever?" Uh, you, did did you give her clear instructions? And I said, I told you that yesterday. I told you yesterday, and I told her yesterday that I did. So it's like, I feel like I have to argue. I feel like I have to be defensive. And then uh, my mentor even said this morning, you know, she goes, uh, he, she goes, he goes, uh, Jean Carroll, you know, you got your food delivered. Everything's all right now. Um, what do you need? And I said, I just need to feel like I'm fucking right. And you know, you know that old, that old, that old, uh, vantage, that old, uh, that old thing, uh, that says, um, it's better to be happy than to be right. Sometimes you're not happy until you feel like you're right. Um, I know what I believe. I know what I did and didn't do. But when someone makes you feel like, 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 like otherwise, it really can fuck with your psyche. It really can fuck with your mind. And it can even make you feel like, like, like you're a bad person. It can make you feel like you're unreasonable. It can make you feel like, um, like, like they're good and you're bad and you don't even deserve to be on the planet. It really can make you feel that way if you let it go that far. GPT went on to say, seek support. And I said, um, I don't feel like I have, I need support. I feel like I was asking for too much now. And they said, uh, you know, you deserve to have your needs acknowledged and respected. And then it said, uh, I can I can follow that suggestion, but I don't feel like I even have support, you know, anywhere. When I feel like I don't have support, I start believing that I'm I'm wrong and I'm bad. And I said, can this kind of issue even discourage you from seeking support? And it said, yes, it is possible for experiencing a lack of support, facing discouraging situations to impact someone's willingness to seek support. That's why uh, narcissists really like to isolate victims. You know, I'll, I'll do a side note there. They do that to discourage people from uh, getting help. Um, you know, what, you know, they, they can either mess with your mind or threaten you. Um, this situation is not threatening. But it really does make me feel crazy. Um, 
I think I know how to give directions to someone. Um, when I, when I use Uber to get rides, usually the drivers, uh, the drivers know where to pick me up. The drivers pick me up in the spot that I, uh, that I instruct them to. So I don't know why, and, and this is the same company. This is Uber. So, um, okay, it said something like this. If someone has previously sought support and received negative experiences or unhelpful responses, they may develop a belief that seeking support is not worthwhile or that it will only result in further disappointment. Yeah. So I said something like, um, I even feel like positive experiences need to be questioned. And then it said, uh, gaslighting can have a deeply invalidating and distressing experience on you. It can undermine your confidence in your own perceptions and experiences. So, um, you know, it, it, it's telling me I have to, um, hang in there and, um, believe what I need to believe. I got to hang in there and know who I am and trust my perceptions and trust my intuition. And I know this woman just, this woman had another reality that just didn't match mine. And she kept on pushing it on me. And then, uh, Uber chose to, uh, side with her. And I have no control over that. Um, I'm going to let it go now for the sake of uh, not being part of the problem. But um, I want to tell the public, um, if you find yourself in a situation like this, chances are um, at least 50%, you have a 50% chance, maybe even a larger percentage, maybe even 75% chance to give yourself the benefit of the doubt. Even if you have to give someone else the benefit of the doubt, even if they didn't mean to hurt you, that doesn't mean you're the one that's bad. It just means, you know, may, maybe maybe it's a situation where you're both right and uh, you feel like you're wrong because of the way the person uh, talked to you or because of what you experienced. You know, it's like the balance of power doesn't always match what we expect or, de or even deserve. I had a friend a long time ago who said, Jen Carroll, we don't always get what we deserve. That's life. You know, be careful not to make it into an entitlement issue. <sighs> okay. So uh, be safe, everyone. Um, I'm going to see if I can put the link later on. This is a, a little bit of work for me, and I hope I can remember to do this. But um, I'm going to... This is going to go on YouTube, and I'm going to see if I can um, post this on my other podcasts. Because um, I have to utilize the freebie of Spreaker. So um, there's a chance this uh, episode might get lost, might get deleted. But I'll uh, leave it on here for a while. And um, search me on YouTube. Cerol, C-E-R-O-L, Universal Ethics. And it'll probably be on YouTube. Just look for the word gaslighting. It'll hopefully be in the description or the uh, title. Okay, be safe everyone in mental wellness.